The way I use Clip Studio Paint is just typically you create some sort of canvas. And this is not the inter interesting part, but I have a template set up where I have like a paper, then I have my little uh, little text here. That tells me, that tells the user that you can go to this URL to find me drawing live, typically live. And what I do is I use keyboard with my Syntec. So I have a keyboard right, right, right here. And I can I can select different tools and do up different things here with the keyboard, and that's very useful to me because I have I like having that sort of tactile feel to my to my workflow and the keyboard. But then I also have like a lot of hotkeys and like different different sort of setup here. So let's let's take a look at like how I would approach drawing something. And typically, what I start with is a reference set. So what I might want to do is I might go here and select a couple of references from my reference folder and I just throw them in a pure ref. Pure if I absolutely adore this program. You just like select things, then you uh, do a little uh, adjusting, and you just throw things different places with your with your keyboard and mouse. I can just take these ones if I want them in a straight line. You can just you can just do things, and then you have everything in the perfect uh, configuration for your uh, for your art session. So I'm gonna do something. I'm gonna just just do something, and let's see how that goes. Of course, what I start with typically is a sketch. I have my brushes set up here, so I might select something like, I like sketching with my sketch pen, which is kind of like, uh, mm, it just has some opacity pen pressure settings. And that's about it. It has also color mixing. I use color mixing on most every every brush that I use, unless it specifically needs to be off. But I just, I just like having that on. I don't use a lot of stabilizations. And the way I use stabilization options is because I have two monitors. And the Wacom Cintiq that I have is 1080p, and the other monitor that I have is 4K. So there's a bit of a DPI-related hassle going on there, and most drawing programs just don't know what to do about it. So when I'm drawing something from like really far away, like I might be here, and I start drawing something, and I start to get like jagged thing, and it might be like other settings that you're doing, you're just drawing something very slow, and you start to get these sort of jaggies. And I don't like that, so I have a little bit of stabilization, just for that reason. If, if, if this didn't happen, I wouldn't care, but it does, so there we go. And this is the first uh, shortcut, by the way, that I used, that I created, that I use all the time. Photoshop doesn't have this, so I created an action for in Photoshop <laughs> originally, but in Clip Studio, I think you can just clear a layer. And what I do is I hit F2, and that's just close by. I do it uh, constantly when I'm, when I'm starting a new thing, I might do some sort of things, and then I just, then I just clear the canvas. So then we start sketching, and I might do like a little uh, character thing. Have a uh, uh, eyes there, and so on and so forth. And you also already see what I'm doing here. Uh, is I'm I'm uh, trying to set up the brush to be the sort of size that I like when I'm drawing. And many people use they have some sort of like dials or something on their on their canvases, or they use some sort of hotkey. You have something like I don't even know what that is in in Clip Studio. Uh, but th that to me always felt very I don't I don't like doing that. Like you hold shift and then you drag with your pen to get a bigger brush. It, it just it's such a pressure on the workflow, and I, I just don't like it. Um, and in many programs, it's just such a, it's so hard to do and end up with the sort of brush size that you want to use, that uh, I oftentimes just, I, I can't select the size, size of the brush like that. And uh, many times I want to work with uh, specific sizes that work on the sizes of canvases that I'm using, and I always want to have like, if I, if I tap a key a couple of times, I want to end up with a, with a brush size that works for me, and I know that it will work for me. So I don't like this sort of wishy-washy, it's something. I want it to be specifically, like currently it's 40 pixels, and if I hit a key, I get 25. If I hit a key a couple of times, I get 70. And these are the sizes, I've, I've tested them, and those work for me. And weirdly enough, Photoshop doesn't have a palette like this. Krita does, but you can't bind hotkeys to it. And it's just weird to me. It seems to be only working for me in Clip Studio Paint, where you can you can set the size of the brush, and then you click here, and you can add the current size to the preset, and then you can uh, just bind hotkeys to changing the preset or on the on the panel. So I I have the keys that I have are Q and A. So Q goes smaller, and A goes larger, and goes all the way to two thousand because I think that's the maximum size that Clip Studio supports. But yeah, I can just quickly go to the size that I want by holding the only keys on the keyboard. 
or just tapping a couple of times. Many times I'm just using two sizes, so I mean, I might be doing some sort of like um, detail work, and I need to get a smaller brush, so I hit Q, and then I get the bigger one, so hit A, and then smaller one, maybe a little bit smaller, then larger, and so on. So it's it's very much I like using these specific sizes because they work. If I need to go smaller, I hit the key, and I know that I get a size that is small enough that it still works for me, but it's it's not like it doesn't go super small or it doesn't go you don't have to keep hitting the key because there are so many increments in between. And this is a problem with Photoshop. You get so many increments that are just completely useless for uh, these sizes of canvas. So yeah, that's that's what I use. And if I want to change the brush, uh, you can always go here and click, but I also bound uh, W and S for changing the brush. So I hit uh, W, it goes up, and hit S, it goes down. So this is how I can very easily select, like, oh, I need to airbrush this thing. So I hit S a couple of times, and oh, this is too small, too large, something. So I hit the uh, Q&A a couple of times, and I get the exact size that I want. And then I go back here, and we're using this brush again. And of course, then you have got to think about, well, what, what keys are you giving up? We're already using Q, W, A, and S to get functionality that's very basic. But I use these keys constantly. Like, almost every minute I'm using each one of these keys. And that's a lot more important to me than having Q be the magic one. Because I barely use the magic one. But I have a hotkey for the magic one, and it's the pipe key that's in the corner. Uh, and then I have B to get the brush. And Z is actually the lasso tool. Because the hotkey for lasso used to be L, which is, I guess, from like the 80s. When uh, Photoshop originally had the lasso tool, I don't, I don't know if 1.0 had lasso tool, but uh, like, I don't know, some paint programs had lasso, and it was in L. But you try selecting the lasso tool without looking down on your keyboard. It, hitting L, is, it's just one of those keys that it's, it's somewhere in there, and just hitting, like, hitting something and hoping it hits there. But it, uh, it just doesn't work for me. So I bound it to Z, and I don't even need to look. I can just select something, and I'm selecting B, and I'm selecting Z. And just doing like these, uh, these selection is a lot, a lot simpler like that. All right, so we're drawing, we're drawing, and we're doing some sort of like a knight dude. I'm giving it a big old torso. And here's a little tip. The problem I had recently is I, I try to, I notice that I'm constantly zooming in and out of the picture, which is problematic because I kind of want to stay here and see the whole picture as I'm drawing. But it's just a habit, a bad habit that I developed a long time ago. So what I did is I actually, uh, typically you, you hold control and spacebar so you can zoom. I just unbound that. So it didn't do that anymore. I could hit control and spacebar all I want, but it wouldn't zoom. So then I learned to really stick in one place. And if I needed to zoom, I needed to use something like control plus or something. And I did that for a couple of months, and I don't zoom in and out unnecessarily anymore. It's just a way to way to uh, get yourself out of that habit. Habit. And you want to have uh, your little little tiny hands, tiny Tim's hands. So, but I want to draw, start drawing on top of this, and I set up a hotkey just for this, and it's Shift F three, which turns the opacity of the of the layer to 15% and then creates a new layer. So I can just start drawing and I have to waste time on that every time I want to do some sort of new layer. And plain old F3 just creates a new layer. So if I need a new layer, I F3. If I just want to draw over this thing, and you could color it blue if you wanted to, just, just add it to your auto action. I think it's, uh, I think it's, it's something. Lighten, it's probably this one. Change the opacity and the rest of there we go. And then you just bind a hot key to that one. And this is another one of those weird things that Photoshop doesn't have. You can't change the layer uh, with a hotkey. And you can do it with, with the mouse, but I find that difficult and just, just... I don't like clicking things to do some sort of action. So what I do is I hit Alt and A and Alt and Q to move to between the layers. And it just makes a lot of sense to me. So we're selecting a smaller brush, and I'm zooming in a little bit. And we start doing uh, more of a proper outline once we have the proportions proportions in the right place. This is my workflow currently. I hope to eventually move out of the just making some sort of a proportion picture 
before I do, before I move into more of a detailed look on the on the character. But that's that's what it is currently. Uh, it just uh, it's, it's it's what what I need. I can't do it without it. Uh, it's just my basic workflow. Also, I bound Control B to levels because Control L again L. What the hell? It's it, in like the other zip code trying to hit L with your thumb or something. It's just I I don't I don't, I don't understand it. It doesn't work for me. So most most of the things are just I don't know right, but uh, L people got people got to stop using L as a hotkey. What else? Um, well, okay, if I want to add guides, I have N for adding guides, so I can move between the guides that I usually use. So linear ruler, curve ruler, figure ruler, and symmetrical ruler. So I can quickly go between these ones, and I might want to add like symmetrical ruler for some things, so I can, I can start drawing with that one. And if it's in the wrong place, H is usually bound to like hand tool. Come on, you have spacebar. You don't need a hotkey for hand tool. If you need to change the hand tool settings, I don't even know where it is, but if you need to change the settings, you just click that icon with your pen. Then you change them and you're good. But I have H, H, the H key uh, set for selecting these guides and moving them around. This is, makes a lot more sense to me. Yeah, it's, I typically I try to reserve the hotkeys for stuff that I use constantly. And if it's something that I might use once a day, twice a day, then I'm okay with just going in into the menu, into the toolbar, and click, clicking that button. I don't need to necessarily have that as a separate uh, hotkey. But here we could use the symmetrical ruler. So I hit uh, N a couple of times to get the symmetrical ruler, and then we draw it right, right here, so I can start drawing the sword in a, in a way that makes sense to us. Um, I always start to do this, but this doesn't make a lot of sense in a sword. The sword is supposed to be mostly straight blade because you're trying to slash things, cut cut things by slashing them. And if you got a lot of like this sort of thing in a sword, well, guess what? It doesn't slash anymore. <laughs> so you're essentially making it completely useless, Un unless it's a magic sword that doesn't actually need to slash anything to make damage. So that's just uh, something you gotta keep in mind, I think. And then, of course, if you don't know these hotkeys here for the uh, rulers or the guides, you just control one, two, three, and it turns them off so you can draw without the symmetrical ruler. And if you need the ruler, then you just hit control two and it turns that on again. Oh, oh, and here's another tip. I, I was constantly struggling with this. Uh, I was, uh, I like hitting E to go to the transparent color, but I never knew which color I was. Was I in transparent mode or was I, was I in opaque mode? So I ended up like drawing a couple of lines, then I'm like, oh, I'm in the wrong mode. Undo, change the mode, and go the other one. And then I'm drawing with that one. I, I look at something, I forget which mode I'm in. So I try to start to draw, I'm like, oh, you undo, and then you start the other one, and then you draw the same thing again. It's a huge time waste, not to mention you're just getting frustrated because you're constantly doing the same thing over and over again, and you're undoing stuff that you didn't mean to do. You, it, it's not a mistake, you just like didn't, you didn't realize what, which mode you were in. So I don't use the approximate color. I don't try to like select some colors that are around the colors I've selected. It's, I guess it could be useful and it's there if I need it. But the main reason I have it is because now I know that I'm in the opaque mode and if I hit E, I know that I'm in the transparent mode unless I have like a white color selected, but that's, it's rare. It's more rare than not, but it's just a visual indicator of like, what am I doing? What am I doing with my, uh, with my program? And I do that mistake a lot less now, so I'm, I'm wasting a lot less time on just being in the right mode. And the reference picture doesn't have legs really, so I'm just doing something here to, to close, the, close the liner, because what we do next is coloring, and what I do with coloring is, well, I would like to like go through this one more time with like real line art because this is still just guides, but uh, let's just let's just keep going and let's do something something useful. So what I would do then is I would select my magic wand and hit the outline, and I get some pretty large massive gapes here. 
So we gotta just go in here and close the lines. And it's, it's, it's fine, it's fine. It's, it's, gonna be, it's gonna be good eventually. And with the uh, Magic One tool, or whatever it's called, auto select, you can select close gap, so you don't have to have like every pixel connecting, and that's fine, it's good. You can have area scaling on, which I really like. Oh, that's just a gap there. But uh, yeah, then you hit this thing, and it gives you what you need, more or less. Let's see here. I also select this thing here. Also select that one. But yeah, we're mostly we're mostly good. So then, when I have uh, <laughs> one of these hotkeys that is really weird for any sort of tablet use is inverse selection, which is I tend to need it more than I more than I would think. So uh, Control I or Control Shift is Control Alt I something like that. I just bound it to Shift Z, and there you go. It's very simple compared to what you had before. So then you just go below the layer, create another layer, and then you fill the thing with an appropriate color. And then when I use color, um, do the initial shapes is I just select uh, the hotkeys U for it's like lasso fill. The tool is lasso fill, and I select the color and I start going in here and I just you use it like a lasso tool, but it takes away. The problem where you're oh uh, okay it takes away the problem where you have to like select something and then fill it and then select the selection tool again and select the thing and then select the filling tool and fill it it's just so much quicker uh, especially if you create a new layer on top of this thing and then hit Control Alt G which is I think the default setting for making this a clipping layer is it a clipping layer yeah clip layer to blow so then you can just go in here and you're uh, you're uh, playing with fire. And I don't, I don't tend to try to do a good job with these. I just do like, okay, that needs more color uh, or that needs more brightness, I guess. Uh, maybe the hands, the arms are gonna be a little bit brighter. Maybe the sword blade is gonna be brighter. I'm just looking at like, uh, am I creating a good contrast between separate elements? It's looking all right. Maybe this could be slightly darker here. Maybe this, maybe there. Maybe the belt could have more of a shadow on it. Uh, that's looking good. And then we can go here and select something like I have this thing called Copic. I just created this thing called Copic. It's got a lot of blending going on, and it's kind of hard to use if you're just painting all over transparent pixels because uh, the blending doesn't really work with transparency. So what I tend to do in these cases, I, I just blur, I just combine the layers. So this one that I have on the top, the clipping layer, I just combine it with the solid layer, and then I start, um, and then I go here and start like. Uh, Filling in the things that look wrong. So I'm gonna put some some more here, some more over there. Create some shadow in there, and just very lightly put some darker values there. And then I select the darker value, and then I start painting that in. And it's a very simple process, I think. Like here, you can see because I did such a poor poor job with the lasso fill, I got a bunch of problems here on the sword. Doesn't matter. I just. Uh, just go in there and I fix the problems with some sort of brush. Same thing here. Just like fix it later. <laughs> fix it in the post. That's the that's my mantra. Because if it breaks the workflow, that's gonna be a lot worse for me than than uh, spending a little extra time fixing the thing. So I like to get to a good point first, and then then spending a lot of time like maybe fixing, maybe doing something else with the rest of the rest of the character. So I can go here and just do. A little bit of like basic shading on this character, and the way I like the way I like the yeah, color mixing is I can just very easily start blending these tones tones together, and it's just it's like magic. I just love it to bits. I think I even have a better one. It's called Soft Blender. It does even more of a blending job than the Copic uh, tool that I have, and I can just uh, keep adding. Values get a bit of a texture also going, so that's that's always nice if you want that sort of thing. So I'm, I'm trying to think these shapes as cylinders, so I'm creating some uh, cylindrical uh, shading on this uh, on this arm here. Maybe do the same thing with the with the forearm. Just in here, just trying to create some cylindricity. <laughs> yeah, that's that's about to be a word. Ooh, uh, all right, maybe give a bit of light on this side, maybe a bit of light on that side, maybe do a little rim light here. Who knows? Who knows? Could be anything. 
And then there are a bunch of different routes you can go with the with the outline thing. You can turn it turn it down a little bit, or maybe you want to just select the output and brighten it up. That's a that's a good me method to use. And then just pull, then just merge it together with the with the other layer. And what I what I start doing after that is I go a little bit closer to the thing and I start to just paint things here. That's how it goes. But yeah, that's about uh, all the basics I have. And maybe I'll do another Eclipse Studio Paint video sometime in the future, but okay, catch you around.